Welcome to my orchid channel, Karin's Orchids, and welcome back! Lovely to see you again. And well, I'm highly aware that I haven't been uploading any videos <laughs> for a couple of weeks now, and well, that's not like me, and that's not how I would like things to be. But uh, the little thing called life came in between and prevented me from filming, and the little flu as well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And I believe the stuff has for a reason, so uh, further on, from now on, um, I believe we can fix this together and fix the downwards pointing stone rocketing <laughs> grey arrows <laughs> on my YouTube ratings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff happens rapidly here on YouTube. So, filming constantly on a regular basis is really necessary to keep it up here on YouTube. But, well, 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 we're only humans, aren't we? Well, this video is going to be about my puffy petalums and I will also report one or two together with you guys. But first and foremost, I will show you one first time bloomer for you, an incredible puffy petalum. And that one would be puffy petalum Philippinense variation Robellini. Had it for some time. One and a half, two years, perhaps. From Swarta, Orchidin. Never reported. Still sitting in its coarse, yeah, kind of medium grey bark. In a black container. Uh, it's cracking. <laughs> As you can see in here. Medium grey bark only. Just a layer of moss put on top of it to cover the new roots a bit so they wouldn't dry out as they were emerging. Yeah. <laughs> Details. Very long twisted petals. Three flowers in this blooming. Well, not scented, <laughs> so it's a pendant flower spike. It took some time to develop nicely. At first, I thought it was a rotten black leaf coming out from the center. Ah, oh, there may be something else in here. You may never know, but we shall see about that. I got it as a flowering size orchid, kind of expensive one, and I also do have. The uh, original one, the typical form, the Philippinense. And that one looks like this. Puffy Petal Philippinense. Well, the name reveals where it's at, where its habitat is. The Philippines and Borneo. This particular one, variety. The Robellini is, is named after one of Sanders orchid collectors, Carl Robellin. Yeah, you, that guy found the very first ones. But this orchid has got more narrow leaves than the typical one. As for this guy, as you can see, kind of white. Not white. <laughs> and this one has got more twisted petals. Than a typical one, Philippinense. Uh, this guy's flowers lack green markings as well, so there is a difference between the both of them's flowers. And they're kind of widely spread throughout the Philippines and the northern part of Borneo, and it's a kind of warm grower with a natural drop during night time. That's all he needs, as you can see. It's been kept really, really hot throughout the time I've had it. And it should be watered all year round. Uh, a little bit less uh, frequent waterings and fertilizer. 
uh, during the winter period, but uh, it shouldn't dry out completely. So, um, and these guys can really tolerate older, not decompose, but older medium. So they can stand not being reported once or twice a year. So it's better not to disturb it, of course. And I've seen the results of my green ones up there. Never once reported. Looking swell. A lot better than my motto leaved ones, which has been reported. So, uh, yeah. But you should never let the um, medium degrade and become soggy and sour. So when that day arrives, you will need to report it. But the funny part is that on the Philippine Sea, new growth don't produce any new roots until the new growth has become one to two years old. So uh, if, you, um, if you're planning on dividing it, yeah, make sure you don't separate the, uh, only the newest growth from the mother plant. Yeah, you would need to make a good cut add a middle part and divide it all together, I suggest. Well, let's continue and see what else we got. Okay guys, um, for the time being I'm keeping all of my Paphiopedalums in my kitchen area. Some of them in my cultivation cabinet with a somewhat higher, <laughs> a lot higher humidity range um, and a few green leaved ones on top and I feel that they like it and they are really thriving up there the green, plain green leafed ones so a little bit of a roof fan <laughs> we keep the temperature down a bit um, I decided to switch it on only during night time since the electricity bills has uh, risen by 500% lately so it's half of my rent now so uh, I needed to uh, make some adjustments uh, yeah regarding my yeah I my electricity items yeah but anyways enough talk but the green plain leaf ones on top there a little bit cooler provided with LED light from yeah from behind <laughs> well it's enough and from time to time I even switch on the LED light inside the roof fan or shall we say in the roof fan but no, not very often. It's not really needed. They seem to thrive anyway. And most part of my model leafed ones I'm keeping in my cultivation cabinet here. And a few others, of course. Uh, the ones I, I've seen are doing a lot better in this cultivation cabinet with high humidity. And yeah, they seem to like it better and need a little bit more humidity than the plain green leafed ones and in the very room I have 22.6 degrees Celsius which equals 72.6 degrees Fahrenheit and 55% humidity so yeah it's kind of a right Rose Dawn, one of my favorites brought home from the orchid show in Lund in Sweden, southern part of Sweden, in September last year. It's a hybrid cross, yeah, it certainly is. Nevertheless, look at it. It's a fabulous glossy flower, and if that wasn't enough, it's kind of fragrant as well, and very, very long lasting. Indeed, kind of large as well. Yeah, no, I've got a normal size hand for being a lady, yeah. <laughs> this one is a good size one, really is. And the good thing with this orchid is that it's a sequential bloomer, so she will. Oh, she's, yeah, she's already starting on her second bud here. And I think that that's what she's going to create. At least she did so two months ago. On a previous spike and this one was created in my care not long after I received this orchid so this one I didn't expect 
And you know what, guys? This little guy, I did not expect. Certainly not expect. So, uh, yeah. Words are redundant, I think. Uh, and Motto leaves it as well. Such a lovely sight. Yes? Feel that she's sitting in... Uh, Let's check it out, guys. Yeah, they added on a little bit of... Let's see now. Um, <laughs> what is this? Um, crushed seashells, I assume, into the mixture. Now we need to cover the root. It's really important that the roots aren't exposed. They will dry out and die for you. Um, since Papu Petals doesn't carry that many roots all together, one root is bad enough to lose, so take that into consideration when growing these guys. Paffy petalums, gems. Well, guys, actually, I got loads of paffy petalums. Uh, well, I'm really kind of known for making, um, uh, yeah, kind of sort of long videos, but uh, I always find new stuff to talk about while I'm at it, so. It never ever seems to turn out the way I planned. But anyways, what is this? It's a gorgeous orchid. Last time she bloomed for me, or shall we say the first time in my care, it was in February, um, I think last year, yeah, last year. And I even made a care collab on this guy, together with a few other care collaborators. <laughs> and she was actually in bloom, so I was so happy to be able to show this guy in bloom. But you know what? What about this growing pattern? Yeah, two large leaves, one small leaf, and a spike. Yeah, and if we turn this thing around, two large leaves, one small-ish leaf down there, which are gonna grow about this high until this little thingy in the middle probably will turn out to be a bud. Keep your fingers crossed for that being reality. Yeah? But, um, some people say that the Stellanati uh, was kind of difficult to grow back in the days. It was considered a really, really uh, tough orchid to grow for beginners. But I, I'm kind of, sort of, well, not really, but I, uh, in a way, a beginner. I uh, haven't got 40 years of experience, actually. <laughs> so I guess I'm a beginner. Um, it shouldn't be drying out at any point. But, yeah, having it up there, I can see now that it's been drying out a little bit too much for my liking. And some people say that in the wild, this particular orchid grows in really acidic uh, conditions and swamps and uh, moss and stuff, whatever. So uh, this one can tolerate being put, or shall we say, reparted into moss-based mixture, medium, more than other mottled-leaved pedalums in the mottled-leaved family, so to speak. Um, yeah, but why did the provider put seashells into this bark mixture and why is this orchid thriving yeah so it's always questionable everything has to be questioned <laughs> in order for the evolution to have its natural course isn't that so anyway a little bit of water put this guy perhaps repart it we shall see but now a bit of water with some fertilizer rich and phosphorus can sort of reach <laughs> 40, yeah. In order for the spike, uh, <clears throat> soon to be, come the spike to develop nicely and actually become something. Ah. <laughs> Guys, look what I found. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the very right day to discover <laughs> my Mordier. Yeah, oh, look at her. But <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> All I know is 
with this orchid was that she didn't like it in the cabinet and she rotted off a fair amount of her growth. Well, it's natural. They drop the growth uh, every year, the old growth. But it's, I mean, she looked so terrible. Yeah, but it really looked so very nasty. So I thought the whole orchid would go straight down the drain all together. So I removed her from the cabinet and put her on the top shelf. And look what happened. A little bit of change of conditions and the very right time for her to flower. As you can see, it's not a first time really. But now she's progressing. Yeah. I was about to repart her together with you today, but I don't feel that it's necessary already. So Let's just um, focus on a few other orchids, but this one really needs to be watered as well. Yeah, it's getting kind of dry up there, so uh, that's the uh, downside of it, with all the um, air circulation going on. It's kind of dryish, so I better keep an eye on the orchids so they don't yeah, get too dry, but it's not so severe for the uh, green-leafed ones. They can tolerate being a little bit dry for a couple of days at least. But uh, after that you will notice some leaf drop and then you know. <laughs> yeah, some water and a little bit of fertilizer. This guy as well. Well guys, let's just bring the whole lot down. <laughs> I wonder if there's anything else going on. <laughs> Why I weren't watching. Now, and I do have another little tray. I think the uh, uh, moving trays, or shall we say, the ones you can twist and turn, I, I'm not sure what, uh, yeah, anyways, what the names are, but it doesn't matter, a little tray you can use for food, dishes, uh, to pass the sauce, <laughs> to pass the gravy on to another member of the family. Hello Kurt, you would like to have some gravy? Oh no, Anna, would you like to have some, no, yeah, you know what I mean? It's a really, really great tool for the kitchen table if you've got a huge family. But it's also a great tool if you would like to shift the position where the best light is at. So this is coming from only one direction, really. Yeah, it's good to shift every now and then, every other day. So all of them get a fair amount of decent light at times. That's what I think. But, um, what to deal with, yeah, this orchid is a great, yeah, maybe you should see it first. Ah, uh, this orchid is a great looking orchid. Hey now, <laughs> hey, <laughs> Pepsi Pedalum, hey now, the Anum, times Michael Kopovich. Yeah, I believe it's a species crossed with a hybrid, a famous hybrid, Michael Kopovich. This one, um has got, let's see now, really bugs. And you want to know where these guys came from? Yeah. It came from these guys. The, um, my oranges, oranges. Kirky and Pokey Eye and Mr. Sidi Eye from the Orchid Show. So um, I'm a bit disappointed and it's spread partially inside this cabinet onto a few orchids. But I, but I do think that mealybugs are a bit better than scales. So, well, yeah, well, I'll just leave that uh, discussion for another day. But uh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Easier to remove at least. I remember at some point I claimed that puffy peddlums don't get any pests, uh, except for spider bites, perhaps. And somebody said, no, 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 you're, you're faulty. It's totally wrong information. I said, I've never seen it. Never, ever. 
until I put these guys into the cabinet next to the um, the meal bug infestated um, Arendius orchids. So, yeah, better get um, get to this mad today. So this one needs a repot, anyways. Look at its roots; they are soon gonna stop, or if they didn't already do so, growing. It's far too dry now. So, needs a better medium. And it's not decomposed or anything. It's just that I need to refresh it. And put a bit more down into the pot. And this orchid is also a really, really nice one. Look what it did. One year, it grew this leaf. I'm not really sure what it is, but it looks strange enough. Uh, no flowers yet. Perfume Pedalum, Prince Edward of York, Times Lady Isabel. Two really lovely Perfume Pedalums. Yeah, it's um, wobbly and it's falling and its newest roots aren't coming out. We don't have the uh, ability to do so. So let's see what we should do with this guy. And the medium looks a little bit questionable, so let's just repart it and add a little bit of seashells to it as well. So I'm going to put these guys into some water and then soak. Well, it should be liking it in the cabinet, but well, it's not. So um, I'm not really sure what to do with it, if there's any point in uh, keeping it at all. I mean, at, that is a new leaf at least. I mean, it's a pity to throw it away, but it's a far too heavy pot for it, for starters. And we also have this lovely orchid, or shall we say, not so lovely. The orchid which tried to bloom. The um, Perfipellum ferianum. Um, sometimes I'm not sure what nature, was it nature or was it man who created this little orchid? Not able to carry its own weight on the bud. The stem was too fragile, too weak, too soft, too, too everything, too much of everything bad in order to hold the bud. The bud was too heavy and that shouldn't happen. In nature, it's not really staked up, is it? So I tried to save it, but uh, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was no point. I just had to do something. I mean, this is my, I don't know why, but I, I really do have a thing for this orchid, this fairy anum. Maybe it's because of its lovely name. No, I'm not sure, but I love it. So, uh, but it's coming on with another growth. It looks kind of alright, at least. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> no. And this one is really growing. Uh, it looks kind of weak, but it is. So it needs a repot and to be rinsed. And let's see what it offers us um, this season. Um, kind of dry-ish. So this one needs to be repotted. This one certainly needs to be repotted. These two guys as well, but I'm going to show it uh, not, not in this video. It's going to be the same procedure. Uh oh, this lovely Isabel of York. I mean, not Isabel of York. <laughs> I mean, Edward of York and Lady Isabel. It's going to be reported since her roots are coming out on the outside, and that's not a good thing. And, <laughs> and this gorgeous little thingy shall be reported. Have you pedal head now, the Anum Times Michael Kokovich eh, is leaning to the side, exposing his roots. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen today. And what cure are we gonna use and give these guys today? Hmm, what strange solution do we have to make them thrive? So now we got all we need on the table. Ready mix orchid soil with a good amount of pure bark in it, not so much dust and other additives. Best one available at market here at the moment. 
Ah, that can rapidly change, I've noticed. The quality. Uh, Muschelkalk! Yeah, trust seashells. At the same time, the use. Already been using in these guys' pots. So, they're familiar with it. And I'm gonna use a little bit of perlite for aeration and to hold the moisture a bit longer. So the bark is going to be kind of, uh, not saturated, kind of dries for uh, the next following month or so. So I've been soaking it frequently enough times for it to be saturated, to hold the moisture a little bit better again. Um, and maybe a little bit of sphagnum. We shall see along strands in that case. And a bit of charcoal, fine. Real fine charcoal. Shake the dust out of it. <laughs> really good. Yeah. <laughs> Branches out. Not needed here at all. So. Now we shall need another bowl, so it won't pour out through the holes here. What's the point? <laughs> so, let's mix it up all together. I just told you it was a good mix here, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it is, it is. All right, a little bit of this add on to it. And a bit of charcoal, not much, just a little bit. So that was all for this mixture. So let's see, let's start with this guy, the most accurate one. Fairy Annum. Fairy Annum. My dear Fairy Annum. Fairy. Uh, needs a refresh, really. Yeah, but it's um, <laughs> yeah, but its root system is um, it's not good by any means, but it's not so bad either. Look at this root; it certainly is alive. Look at the hairs. Provides the root with oxygen. It's just kind of sponge onto it. Yeah. Anyways, its roots maybe. Uh, yeah, kind of papery. So let's see too that this guy is able to produce some good new roots here. I would like this one to survive. Uh, it's kind of difficult to get hold of a uh, flowering sized fairy anum out there. Believe me, I tried several times and at last I succeeded. And look where it got me or us, shall we say, we're in this together here on this channel. So, um, it's just like my plants or your plants as well. A little family, in a way. See too that this guy is <laughs> meal bug free. Ah, yeah, seems to be meal bug free. Now, I, I think it's about time to cut off this little spike. I just wanted to show you that it's been blooming, or at least tried to bloom. And I'm gonna put up pop up if I can find the picture. I believe I posted it in the community uh, some time ago when I was so proud, yeah. And I had loads of expectations showing this one in bloom for you guys. Yeah, that's the way it is. Can't win them all. Can you? Thanks, this, yeah, could be enough. A good pot for it. Uh, you might ask yourself, why am I using this huge pot? Aunt... Papiopelum is supposed to be sitting in kind of cozy pots. Well, in this case, oh lord, there is a mealybug, fully developed female. Why do they always attack the ones most desirable? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the game of nature, isn't it? Um. <laughs> 
Anyways, I better keep an eye on this one as well then. <laughs> There's a sponge clinging on to this root. <laughs> Whoa, yay, slippery. Oh, yeah, it's alright to spray the roots. Uh, not the greatest of conditions, are they? And anyways, back to potch, yeah. I, I think <laughs> this one has dried out a bit too much. Even though it's sitting in the cabinet, yeah. What can I do? Either have it in this huge pot, the medium round, and beg for the medium to keep the moisture a little bit longer as it's being kept in a, such a big pot. Or keep it in moss, which this orchid is not used to be sitting in, all right? Or I can use a mixture, a blend, but it will probably kill off the roots. I have a bad feeling that it will. So I'm going to stick to the conditions it's used to be sitting in. I mean, the medium, the way it's, it's um, adapted. I can fuss about with this one later on when it's more and better adapted. Since it's not a very strong orchid, is it? So, the bigger the pot, the longer the moisture will be kept in it. Um, in a way. Loads of um, perlite shall do the trick as well to keep the moisture. And this one will need to be watered quite frequently, as I said, for starters. Um, quite, quite low down, so this is kind of dryish. There won't be any rotting to the surface here at the base. That's what we always are afraid of when potting up cattleyas and other stuff, phalaenopsis and so on. That they will rot to the base if we put them a little bit too low down into the pot or so. But I think this will do for him. Cannot see any roots but one day we shall. And cut off the spike. Yes. Yeah, some Chinese food I picked up some time ago. Short to sticks. Mm -hmm. Why not? Ready to use. Reuse. Down you go. Support it and straightening it out a little bit at least. Yes. Until it can, yeah, grow upright by its own doing in the future. So, I'm going to give it a good soak now. There's a good chance I can use a smaller pot for it as well. <laughs> hey. Look at this poor thing, Godfrey. I don't think that there's any live roots in here. Or is there? Or will they just simply fall off as I remove the moss? Hey, they did. That's what always seemed to happen. What you can see on top, that was highs underneath, in most cases. Only two viable, but really um, not soggy here. So they are still functioning. Hmm. It will be really, really interesting to see what this orchid does in the future. So, having said all that, this orchid is really, really used to be sitting in moss based mixture. And this part is far too heavy for it. I will have to make some adjustments to my plants. And we're going to find ourselves a smaller pot. And we will also use a fair amount of sphag moss. I'll cut it this time, I think. Yeah, maybe. Make a mixture of its own here. Just a little bit of this. A little bit of charcoal. And a bit of this, the smaller pieces of the bark here. So, I think that will be enough. Yes. In there. I'll keep it. 
No, let's start with the, um, the roots here. Yeah, they do fit perfectly in there. If I could squeeze them down a bit more, it would be helpful. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good thing if it leans to the back side. The whole lot is so wobbly and it can break any minute. And then I'll have to throw the whole orchid away. That would be a pity. It's interesting to see what it does. Or if this is it. This is the end for my little guy. Yeah. So when you receive an orchid in bloom, let's not be fooled. Let's just take a good look, regardless of the flower. To see what you actually is holding in your hand. Yes. Would it be such a good plan if it wasn't in bloom? You can ask yourself that question and say yes to it. Yeah, it probably is a good plant. And it will and shall bloom for you for years to come. But this one, look at it. So, I think we're done here. With this one. Does it need any support? Yeah, I think so. Now it's a bit more stable. So, let's see what it does, shall we? So, let us take a look at the Lady Isabel, Prince Edward of York. Uh, looking kind of great. Loads of um, musicock. <laughs> now, loads of um, stuff. <laughs> Coconut husk fiber and... Uh, but not so many dead roots, yes? That's great. It's fine. Uh, I hope so. Uh, sometimes a whole lot just falls. <laughs> and it's stuck in your hand. Um, oh, not so bad, but I would like her to produce these guys. Yeah, some lovely new. Look at them. Do I need to? Yeah, I think I do need to remove the leaf here in order to create some new life to her. Sometimes things are necessary. Yes. What do I have here? I think goes for this one. I know, I know, I know. It's for the sake of a good thing. So they are so stirred the leaves. They cannot break through. I cannot push through the uh, the leaves here, so yeah. Here you see another one. So yeah, at least I uh, exposed a few of them, so I can bury this part here. So I'm, now I'm gonna um, gonna clean it off under my tap. So let's use the mixture as it is. Let's add some more. Seashells to the bottom, preferably. A little bit more to the bottom. And see too that she goes as deep down into the pot as possible. So this pot will have a chance to be covered up with soil. And enough space for her to grow her new roots and perhaps someday even another new growth if that's possible. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to wonder. But she likes it in here. Um, it seems that um, not all that much. So let's change that option for her. Let's see if this works. Out the way I planned. I'm using, I'm trying to use a little bit, uh, the smaller pieces just fall into the bottom. Yeah. Since she's used to be sitting in kind of a, a lot of uh, moisture, let's not take that away from her. Who knows, maybe she'll bloom. <laughs> maybe she'll even bloom. Not in this treatment. Now it looks kind of sort of even. Eh little hole there. 
Yeah. I guess we solved it a bit. Yeah. I don't think we should be so picky about it. We're doing fine with a little air gap as well, so it will settle after a few waterings. Oh, there's a dog barking in my stairwell. <laughs> Neighbor's dog. Yeah, anyways, now she's reported as well. And she's going to be flushed. So all the excess um, dust will uh, be poured through and flushed off. Yeah. And of course, I will also um, stake her up. She's already got this little thingy here, so it's possible for, possible for me to uh, <laughs> stake her up really easy. that long of stick but like this so so now she's gonna be soaking for uh yeah 30 minutes yeah and here's the mealy bug little thingy let us see what's here yeah it's that uh, leaf here we'll peel that one off yeah hmm let's see and damage has been done or not. Um, this root is dead. They are alive. They can do well, uh, really well in bark mixture, it seems. As goes for mealy bugs, they do well in bark mixture as well. Let's get rid of them, please. Yeah, I need to. Um, Oh Lord, there's a lot. Look at it. There's a lot of loads of stuff in here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Hey, even on this side. Are you kidding me? Oh, all right. That's life. Stuff happens. Cotton stick. Uh, and perhaps some alcohol, liquid alcohol, of course, and <laughs> what else, and just get to it, here, see, we can get them all, kill them all, nah, it's not, it's easier than done, but down there, if I go far too deep, uh, the leaf joint will break, so, well, that was okay, nothing to the new leaf, no, nothing. Do we have anything here? This leaf is fresh. Um, this one wasn't, I think. No, there's a lo loads of stuff in here. Some more alcohol, perhaps. Use another one. A nice one. Yeah. Ah. Bad thing. What a lovely orchid. To be carrying around. Yeah. I think we're good to go now, but uh, I will certainly keep an eye on this one. That's for sure. It's such a marvelous plant. Now, um, I think I'll spray it with my biological spray. Kind of soft spray. Really, really mild uh, pesticide. Plant-based, so uh, yeah. All right, let's continue. And still, use the same kind of mixture. Nothing wrong with it. So the same procedure goes for this one. So yeah guys, um I think that would be all. You've seen this before <laughs> now. So why repeat ourselves when we can talk next time and look at some other goody goody stuff. Well guys, thank you all so much for watching and I hope, I really do hope you brought uh, at least some information of value with you. 
uh, yeah, or at least some food for thought, yeah, or a good moment in your armchair or sofa with a good cup of coffee. <laughs> at least that's what I'm hoping for. So, yeah, if you didn't already do so, I uh, would be really happy if you pressed the like button. If you like this video, of course, otherwise, uh, I strongly suggest you don't. <laughs> and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, uh, it would be more than appreciated. So, well, guys, um, take care. Keep on. You're happy growing. And we should talk soon. And, oh, guys, I, I just happened to rip up this one. All in a haze. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, now we know the Mordiai is reported in Spike. And let's see what happens. <laughs>